good evening everyone and hope everyone's well uh welcome to our special on the sofa this evening so our host will be vic morgan as usual and we've got the great pleasure of welcoming mr clem morfini to our stream tonight so let's bring vic on hi vic chris a very good evening to you i hope you're well i'm good how are you I'm all right. Thank you very much indeed. Returning to watching live sport, which is lovely. Speedway yes, and cricket heard. in the last two days. Yeah. Fantastic. I, yeah. I seen your post about the speedway. It looked very exciting. So Yes, yes, very much. It's life's nice getting back to some sort of normality, which is uh, great to see. Yeah. It's just being out in the fresh air watching sport, isn't it? That's all Absolutely. That matters. Quite right too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's bring Mr. Morfini on. Hi, Clem. Hi, Chris. Hi, Vic. Morning, Hiya, Clem. Hiya. Good morning. Good evening to you. Good evening to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <it's all right. laughs> nice and early. It's 6 a.m. here. In, I'm in Brisbane at the moment, so, yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit early, but it's all right. I get up early, so it's not bad. Good. Good. Bright and breezy. Um, <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, please leave them. We have got loads already, so we will get through as many as we can. Uh, as long as they're sensible questions, please. Um, and uh, so I'm going to leave you in Vic's capable hands and I will see you later. Chris, thanks very much indeed. We should say at this point that no court related questions can be answered in the next hour or so. So just bear that in mind, please. We cannot talk about the court case, which is coming up in a couple of weeks time. Uh, Glenn Morfini, very uh, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And uh, we six o'clock in the morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. And a full working day ahead no of you, I guess, as well. Yes, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just uh, I know you've, you've said a lot of this to people already, but I'll just go through some of the facts and figures about you because uh, then you won't have to repeat it. Uh, it's a plumbing business, Axis. Is that right? Uh, several Australian no. cities you're based in. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. We're a more of a uh, mechanical plumbing maintenance business. Uh, we're all over Australia. We're in New Zealand. We're in London. We're in New York. And we, we've got an office in Thailand as well. We've got probably seven to 800 employees worldwide. So when you talk about plumbing, we, we, we're, doing, we're not really doing plumbing. We're doing, we're doing hospitals, casinos, like we're doing a big casino up here which is worth two billion dollars um we, we did the casino in sydney uh, we're doing hospitals we're doing the stadium in sydney we did the stadium in perth uh we're doing hospitals in canberra um data centers metros um, office blocks so we're a different sort of business um but i think people realize how the size and magnitude of the business it is we've got a maintenance business as well so um yeah even in the UK, so we've got a decent sized business in the UK as well. And uh, I think I heard a figure of some 200 million turnover, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, over 200. Yeah, um, and your football interests go, well, you play football at the age of 51. Um, I yeah, I still continue. play. Yeah, I continue not, at not the age that, of Not that good, but um, I, still, I still play. Well, I'm continuing at the age of 65, so welcome to the senior footballing ranks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you're, you once were involved with Harrow Borough in North London, is that right? Yeah, so when I first went to London in 2007, 2008, um, I wanted to own a football team. Uh, I spoke to a client of mine and they said, look, instead of owning a football cl club, why don't you go and sponsor a club? Um, I got introduced to the directors of Harrow Borough, which I sponsored and got a couple of seats on the board for a couple of years and then we met a mutual friend my sales director met a mutual friend of lee powers and then obviously we got introduced to lee power and you currently own 15 percent of swindon town football club is that right yeah that's correct that's correct and you are hoping to own the whole club Absolutely, yeah. We're, well, that that's the that's that's on the cards at the moment. So we're trying to get the whole club, but obviously there's a court case going through, so we can't really discuss anything what's going on in the court case at the moment. No, fair enough. Yeah, I understand that uh, very much indeed. So let's cut to the chase, then, because I believe you're a man who talks straight. I'm a, a fan of some fifty years and plus standing, a cynical old yeah. fan. 
what would you say to me, as somebody who's been on the terraces of the county ground for more years than I care to remember, that you're the man to take Swindon Town Football Club forward? Well, the first thing we would do is put a new CEO in, into the um, into the management. We'd sort out an advisory board for the supporters. So there'd be a, a seat on the board for the supporters club, a seat on the board for the supporters trust. We'd have Don Rogers there as well. And then a couple of other guy people, the CFO and maybe someone else, to advise the fans what's going on in the club, show them transparency, show them what, what our plans are, and then have, make sure that we've got pure fan engagement for the supporters. Um, obviously show them what, what kind of budget, get a manager, get engagement. So we, I, I know a lot of people have been sceptical of, they obviously I'm on the other side of the world and people go, well, what is he, why is he interested in a football club over in, on the other side of the world? But obviously I've, 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 been, I've been at Swindon in 2014, um, been a shirt sponsor and then been involved and I've met a lot of fans. I've met Anne who was previous the chairwoman of the supporters club and I had a relationship with their and I've met a lot of the supporters trust guys and I've met a lot of people from Great Western Reds. So I've been interested in and I've fallen up with the club and I've seen the potential. Um, and look, are we going to fix it overnight? No, but with hard work and with us all working together, we, I'm sure we can move forward. I believe that with all the, if we're in the right direction, we show transparency and we show them what we're actually doing for the supporters. And hopefully that we, we show the respect to the supporters and hopefully the, the supporters will respect the club because, like I've said before, no one's bigger than the club. Not Claremont, Pew, not Le Power, not anyone. The club's the most important thing and and we need to protect it and we need to make sure that we're all working on the same team. It's not people, someone's asked me, oh, is this a toy for you? I said, no, it's not a toy. I know how serious it is for Swindon Town supporters, how important it is for the supporters, the club. And I, I take it very seriously to make sure that we manage this this club as uh, um, uh, manage the club as as we can and make sure that we're moving forward. So it's, it is very important. You'll be aware that there have been many full storms for Swindon in terms of ownership, uh, consortia, uh, all that kind of thing over the years. Um, some have worked briefly, some haven't. Uh, some owners have been better than others. Uh, why are you somebody who can convince people that you are better than what we've seen previously? You see the point I'm making. There have been many full storms at the county ground. We want one that actually sees the sun come up. So how can you convince us that that will happen? The only way I can convince you is my actions. I, at the end of the day, what I say is what I'm going to do. I, I, there's no If I say to you I'm going to be in the Premier League in five years, I'll be lying to you. But Am I going to have a, a advisory board? I've I've been with with the club since two thousand. I haven't shied away, even though there's been some difficulties with court cases and stuff like that. I've always been. I've I've done the hard yards. I've I've worked hard. I've put a lot of money into the club. I haven't taken a cent or a penny out of the club at all. Um, and I've always invested into the club. So and I just want the club to move forward, not someone else's. Some someone's owners taking money out of the club or that. At the end of the day, like I said in my statement to the supporters trust, our vision and plan. I don't, I don't intend to take any money out of the club, and I'm not getting the salary. I'm going to show the financials. We're going to have full transparency. Well, you might have heard it all before, but I, I, I don't know what else. I've, I've put my money where my mouth is. Um, which I have, I've, and it's taken me a while to get the actual 15%, and that was a bit of a battle as well. And I could have just walked away because I've got other stuff that I, I need to do with work. Like, I do have a business which keeps me quite busy, uh, very busy. Um, so especially being around the world, as I say, the, the sun never sets at axis. It's always, it's always going. Fair enough. Um, how much involvement would you have then? Um, 
bearing in mind you are on the other side of the world, so uh, attending every single game might be a little bit difficult for you. But no, how, well, much, look, how much day-to-day would you have involvement in the club? The, the, the CEO would be running the the CEO and the management would run the man, the the club actual management of the club. The football side of the guys would run the football side. So the football manager, the director of football, the chief scout, they'd be running the football side, and the CEO will be running running the management with in staff, back of house, ticketing, groundsman, um, all the other stuff, um, uh, community sponsors. So, and I would be talking to him obviously maybe twice a week, but at the end of the day, he's there to run a job. It's like my businesses around the world. I, I don't run day to day. I just speak to the manager and ask him, I've got a general manager, I've got commercial managers, I've got CFOs, I've got estimating of the general managers in each part of the business and I ring them. I might ring them once a week, I might ring them three times a week, depending on what's going on at the time and I speak to them and I work out what's going on or I've got to go and see a client or there's issues with staff or people or we're trying to, there's a problem on a project. We, we Depending on, I, I would not be running the club. I'll be running the high-level stuff at the end of the day. I won't be, that's, what, that's why I employ people. There's no point employing someone to go and do day to day. You must not have them. Mm, fair enough. Um, lots of questions coming in already. Um, and uh, what you mentioned management. Um, well, you'll be aware, of course, that John McGreal uh, has been appointed as manager, and Rennie Gilmartin is now the assistant manager. A, did you have any input in that? And this is from Ben. Will you back them, or have you got plans elsewhere? How, how would you deal with that? Because they've recently been appointed, of course. Well, I had nothing to do with the appointment. I'll do that now. Uh, will I back him? Look, I've never met the guys. Uh, like I said, we would have to sit down with John McGrill and his assistant and work out what their plans are. We'd give them all the opportunity to run the club, but depending on what their views are and what our views are and where our direction is, we would support them 100%. Um, but obviously, like I said before, this is a, um, a results business. And if you don't produce results, then then it doesn't work. Doesn't work. So we, we would we would back him a hundred percent. And look, he's in there now. And we, as long as we're in the right direction, then we would do it. Okay, it's John McGrill's birthday, by the way, today. I think uh, he's forty nine. Yeah. It seems uh, right. Happy lots birthday, of, John. Yeah, happy birthday. Uh, questions coming in um, all the time. Uh, and I think you have said this quite a lot. Uh, this is from Dan. Would would you envisage any redevelopment of the stands at the county ground? Uh, one in particular, of course, is the Stratton Bank, which has certain rules and regulations about redeveloping that. So what plans would you have and how difficult would it be to redevelop in the middle of a town centre? Uh, I don't think I wouldn't be. We would we would redevelop the ground and I'd put plans in when we were buying the on the 50-50 with the supporters groups. We, we submitted some plans, what we were proposing. But if we got in, we would do it in stages. We'd do the Stratton Bank, we'd do the Don Rogers, then we'll do the town, and then, then we'll do the Arkle stand. We would submit plans to the supporters groups in the advisory board, making sure that we're happy with it, make sure they approve by count, making sure that it's going to get approved by council and the the um, the residents behind the stand um, as long as they ticks the boxes then we'll submit to council once we get tick approval by council then we will go through the process in regards to tendering to contractors and stuff like that and then look we, we want to i would like to put a roof on but i would have to put it i would put the question to the advisory board and then like the supporters club and the supporters trust would go back to their supporter groups and saying this is what the club is proposing. What do you guys believe? Is there any suggestions? Are you guys happy with it? And then we'd have a unanimous like vote and making sure that we all tick off on it. Look, not everyone's going to be happy about it. I, I, I understand that. Uh, but if majority are happy with it, then we would move forward. Look, I, look, I see the potential in that ground. The ground has got so much potential, but we would have to get it approved by by the um, supporter groups. So, but the first thing we would do is try to buy the ground with the supporter groups like we were discussing on the 50-50 with council. 
Um, obviously, once this hopefully this court case is settled, then we and if I do get in, we would move forward in buying the the ground. 50-50 with the supporters club, uh, the supporter groups. Fair enough. Thanks very much for asking. Uh, lots of uh, questions that we've had in already. Um, right. Uh, uh, this is from John. What makes a great owner of a football club and how can you influence the success of STFC? Well, it's fair to say, I think, unless you plough lots and lots of money and look at Chelsea and Man City, they were both in the European Cup final on Saturday. They're both moneyed clubs. I think it's fair to say. But if you haven't got money to just chuck at it, which I'm assuming as a businessman you you understand the value of money, what's your way forward? How would you sort of build a successful club? I believe the right management with the right supporter engagement and the right players on the pitch. Look, am I going to throw billions of pounds into it? No, I'll tell you that now. But will I invest money into it? Yes, but... I don't know what the damage is. I don't know. I've got to go in there and do a whole due diligence on the club and work out in regards to personnel, people, creditors, and work out where we sit at the moment. No one really knows where where any where it sits at the moment. So we we would we would show what the we would show what what's going on. And I believe without the fans, we're nothing. I'll tell you now. Without the supporter groups. Uh, and all the supporters, I believe that the club doesn't survive. So I believe it's so important for that engagement with the supporters. Uh, proper management, you have the right people, you can do anything. It's, it's no different to a business. If I haven't got the right people running the projects, we don't succeed. Simple as that. But you've got to have the right owner, you've got to have the right people, you've got to have the right management, you've got to have the right CFA, you've got right manager, uh, right manager, right director of football, you've got to have all these right people going for the same direction. If we don't do that, then we're not going to, we're not going to succeed. Simple as that. And it's going to take hard work. Like if, if people think it's going to change overnight, it's not going to happen. We're going to, we're going to, it's going to take time and it's going to take hard work. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of hard work. I've done it all my life. So it's not going to be any different. Uh, Mark answered us this question. My advice to claim it be nice to us and we'll be nice to you. Uh, good luck sort out this uh, particular situation, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of people offering help. Uh, right, this is from Andy. Uh, do you have any partners that will help you fund the, the purchase of the club, or is it entirely your affair? Where do you stand on that? No, just me at the moment. So you're uh, a solo one, yeah. Yeah. And you, uh, and you, from what you just said, you have no idea of the current debt at the club. Is that right? I've got a rough idea, but I don't know how real it is. Like, I hear a lot of, I hear stories of, of it, like, I hear a lot of things, um, even with the businesses, you hear a lot of things, but until you actually get in there and actually see, you know, into Oz, you don't really know what's actually happening. So... Yeah, I, I, look, I don't, I don't know at the moment. I, I'd have to go in there. Look, if if the, the court case is successful, then I'll I'll hopefully jump on a plane and come to England. If the okay. government, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Um. Right. Well, we've touched on the the Stratton Bank. This is from Robert. What are Clem's plans? Should he gain ownership uh, to renovate the Stratton Bank with a roof? We've touched on that one. Can it be done? What we've mentioned. Uh, already there are certain restrictions on that. This is from Carol. Uh, do you have any plans for maximising the non-match day revenue that can be used to help sustain the club? And and this is obviously where English football clubs and well, British football clubs have fallen down in the past, isn't it? Where a ground is only used once a fortnight and uh, yeah. not for the intervening period. So what sort of plans would you have for that? Look, we we need to look. We, first, we need to fix the stadium up. If we fix the stadium up, we can we can put hotels, we can put conferences, we put convention centres. We've got to we've got to we've got to make money off the pitch for us to invest back into the pitch. And I, I believe if if we we're, we're providing like if we're getting revenue of off the pitch twenty four seven, then you're going to have more income to spend on players. And it's so important. Like that, you could put a sports bar, you can put cafe. It depends on depending on what's going on. I've, there's so much to do. 
it's so important that we um, get revenue off the pitch. If we don't get revenue off the pitch, we can't sustain this club. To that now, like there's certain things that sponsors and, but we need to make sure that we're making revenue off the pitch, all the time. Uh, are there models in Australia? I mean, uh, what do Australian rules football teams do? Uh, are that, do they have, uh, they have any, a, you know, things off? Yeah, the they have a, like, yeah. So they have a RSL. They have a club, like an RSL club, where they have restaurants, poker machines, stuff like that. So that generates revenue for the clubs. Um, it's important for that. Um, would I put pokies? I don't know. I look. There's so much a supporter might say, why don't we do this? And it gets it gets legs and it will might run with it. Um but depend, like there's so many models that you can do. Like I've been to so many stadiums around the world, world, and even stadiums in, in England, I see how some of the great stadiums they have over there. And I've been ones in New York and Australia and there's so many like we're doing a foot we're doing a stadium now in Sydney and it holds, I don't know, 42,000 or something like that. But just the corporate boxes, how they interact with the supporter groups. I've spoken to the, the, the A-League clubs in, in Sydney, the rugby league clubs in, in Sydney, and how they interact with their supporters and how they bring revenue revenue into the, the, um, into the teams. So it, there is so much we can do. And there's such a big catch at catchment for Swindon so there is there's opportunity but obviously we need to fix up the stadium look the stadium is a bit bit run down and it needs a good a good clean up <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, I'm being polite <laughs> like many of us do Clem <laughs> not, a, up. <laughs> not, not everyone big come on <laughs> uh, this is from Mark um uh, and it actually goes hand in hand with what we've just been talking to you about. Does Clem believe improvements to the football club could also benefit the town as a whole? Because, you know, the football club yes. used to be the centre of the community and you look at football clubs that have disappeared in the past and you realise how much they mean to the community when they're gone. So, yeah. uh, you know, the community needs to buy into this, don't they? Absolutely. Look, I went to the Brighton Stadium and that stadium is a bit out of the city, but I look at that, how what a great stadium that is. That is like a beautiful stadium. Um, but it's so important to have a great stadium in the community and it, it bring it attracts people. It, it it brings a different life to to the supporters and the community. Oh look, the stadium and it's the gateway to the city. The stadium's down where the magic roundabout is, and then you go up the hill where, you, where all the shops are. But if that stadium had shops and uh, restaurants and stuff like that, and brought a, a life and a, a an experience, it, there would you would have attraction there. That people would go there. It's a different feel. It's funny when you've got a different a new house or a new a new office. You've there's different vibe. It's a different vibe to the. For the community, and it's so important. It's just down the road. It's close to the railway station. It's it's brilliant. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. Be be it should be the centre of the town. The stadium. The stadium should be the, the centre of town. Fair enough. Um, this is from Rob. Do you worry that you may not know the English football business from the inside? Does that matter to you? Um, I mean, you're a businessman. You know how to run things. I know, listen, I know how to run a business. Do I know the details of football? No, but I know a few people that know football. I'm talking about the football side, not the actual management side. I, I look, I understand management. There's not a problem. I've been in business since I was 24 years old. I'm 51. Um, yeah, I look, I don't have an issue with any running the, the business side of it. Do I? That's why we need to employ proper people in regards to the football, in regards to management and and recruitment. Recruitment's so important. Um, finding those right players, um, audit, and having the right budget for for the for the team to make sure that we can keep moving forward. Uh, but like you look like um, you might have the biggest budget doesn't mean you you're going to get you're going to win games, and you, that's proven time and time again. It's about people. People, yes, it's it's important, but. People is important. Um, 
the, the people is the most important. People make make it happen, not money. But what they, but then money follows. Yeah, you look at Morecambe, who've got promotion this weekend. They've not got the biggest budget in League Two, have they? But they've managed no. to get to League One. Uh, this is from Craig, and this goes back on with the, the right um, uh, players. Uh, would you want to build a squad of players contracted to Swindon Town uh, that we can work with over a few seasons or fill it out with loans like we've been doing for a number of years? Now, that model, I guess, if you look at clubs like Yeovil, work for a while. Swindon have used the loan market a lot, but you understand the point that Craig's making. A solid, permanent team at Swindon Town is perhaps the way forward. What are your thoughts on that? Look, I, I think a permanent team is what we need, but I'd have to speak to the director of football. I'd have to speak to the manager and work out how it work. We'd say, well, this is the budget, but they might say we've got a couple of loan players that we can get, which will help the budget. So I, I can't really comment on that at the moment. Do I believe that permanent players should be in the team? Yes, I believe they should be, but I'd have to speak to the managers and the um, director of football and then work out what they – and the CEO, at the end of the day, then they'd, they'd say, well, this is what we're going to do. I'd say, yeah, all right. So yeah. That, that, uh, we have a, a director of football at the minute, uh, Paul Jewell, of course, and you you might be aware that he's made remarks over the last few days about uh, the quality of players that were brought in last season. I don't know if you've heard those remarks, what you thought of them, and yeah. do you envisage having a director of football as such in a similar role? Oh, look, we need a director of football, or a chief scout. We need we need we need a recruitment that is out there hunting for players all the time. We need people that are going out there having a look at these other players that are out there and speaking to the other scouts and the other agents and working out who's out there. There's no point. I think it's so important. Yeah, we need that. We need that um, recruitment. It's so it's important. And, bring, and, and especially even the younger kids, look at... Um, uh, I've gone blank. Um, Scott Twine. Scott Twine. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Sorry. sorry. It's a bit early. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, I look, look at Scott Twine and he went through the the, the academy and I believe, look, look how great a kid he is. And there, there's probably a lot of players in Swindon that we probably haven't even looked at that we should be looking at. So, it depends. depends. We, a lot of people, someone asked me about, oh, would you bring Australian players? Look, I'll bring any players around the world that benefit Swindon. I don't care where they come from. So at the end of the day, I don't, like I want them, we need the best team on the pitch so we can win games. Because when we win games and we've got fan engagement and we've got a great stadium, we tick the boxes and the supporters back up. If we don't do that, it's quite simple. If you don't win games, then we get crucified. If we're not given a, a great pitch and we haven't got transparency and we're not showing what we're actually doing for the for the supporters, we're going to get nailed. So, as simple as that. Uh, you, you'll be aware that we played Exeter a couple of seasons back, and there were thirteen and a half thousand. And I, I, I don't know. Were you at, were you at that game, the Exeter game? Yeah, oh, probably. Oh, look, I've been at a lot of games. Been yeah, yeah, games. fair enough. No, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying it. But the only reason I was going to say, if you were that, you will have experienced the tingle down the spine effect that you can get at the county ground when it's full and it's rocking. Yeah. I, I'm guessing that's what you dearly want to see, isn't it? That sort of atmosphere. absolutely. Yeah, we want we want the atmosphere. We want we want the supporters to support the club. We, we want the whole all the supporters and the town. Backing us and supporting the club, I want. We want thirteen thousand. We want fifteen thousand seven hundred packed. We want everyone. We want everyone there. We want a. Um, well, I remember going there four or five years ago, and I, I caught a taxi, and I asked the taxi guy, and I said to him, "I said, um, uh, who do you follow? Do you follow Swindon?" He goes, "No." I said, "But you live here." He goes, "No, I don't follow. I follow another Premier League club." I said, "You should be following Swindon." He goes, "Oh no, there's no engagement. There's no nothing." I said, "Mark my word, this will change." I don't know if he remembers me, but so I, and that's what we want. We want people to engage with the club. The club is so important. It's a 142 year club, and we want to be here for another 142 years. Yeah, and. 
Let's have a look at this. This is from Dean, I to Dean. Over the last few years, the club has had some very important and knowledgeable people who work for us. Uh, would you look to possibly bring them back? Secondly, do you think our own media channel, like Sunderland, uh, could be an option? You're, you'll be aware that there have been problems with the media at Swindon in terms of some are allowed to ask questions, others aren't. Um, so full transparency is not available if some can't ask questions. It's that simple. What are your thoughts on that? And 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 getting experienced people who worked at the club back there. Look, we would I would go to the CEO and work out what what previous employees and what current employees are there, and work out who are the best employees to bring to the club. Um, I would not have a problem bringing experienced people back. Absolutely, you need them. Um, with Transparent to the media. Look, I, I don't agree with people shutting out the the media to the club. I think the club needs the the media needs to be poking and actually. But we need to be accountable. The the chairman and the CEO need to be accountable, and I, I believe that the media should be there. Look, there might be some questions that you don't want to ask, but that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of the job. So that sometimes you need to ask hard questions. Because unless you, everyone's on their toes, we, we, we need to be on their toes. We can't have a, oh, we can't ask this or we can't ask that. Look, ask me whatever you want. But I'll I'll tell you if I agree with it. I'll I'll tell you if I don't agree with it. I'll just I'll tell you. I'm not I'm not going to mix my words. I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm just I'm just going to see how it is. I think well, yeah, I agree. Or yeah, I'll take it on board. Yeah, I think you're right. And so yeah, look, we're all human. We all make mistakes. All right, and it, am I perfect? No, far from it. But I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work out. I'm set out what we're trying to do, and this is what we want to do. But we need to be accountable. I'm not a problem. The media talk, like talking, asking me questions, and I will never ban them. What would I ban them for? It just alienates them, and then all of a sudden, it, I'd rather be up, open, and transparent. This is what we're doing. Uh, this is from Mark. Clem, it's pretty simple. Get a decent side for us to support, and I promise the place will be rocking. I mean, if you've ever experienced totally the program, <laughs> when, it, when it's going, you know what it's like. It's rocking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fantastic. And, uh, right, um, let's have a look. Uh, th this goes back to what you were saying with the taxi driver, actually, from Mickey. How would you encourage the population of, of Swindon to support their local team rather than sitting watching Sky Sports on a Saturday whilst wearing Premier League shirts. Now, you know, nothing drives me mad more than walking down the street and watching somebody in a Premier League shirt whilst that Premier League side is actually on the television. This person just walking around with a Premier League shirt on and not the local team. It does drive me a bit mad. Um, how can you get people back from watching the big teams, if you like? Well, I, th I think we, we, the fan engagement, I think we need to engage with the com local community, the schools. We need to get a buzz. Once you start getting the buzz and we start winning and there's there's no hidden agendas and we're all open and transparent, I believe that we'll get people coming to the county ground. I agree. We need the right players on the pitch. We start winning. We start going up the league. We go to the next division. We go to the next division. Right? They'll... The county ground will be packed once they see development in the in the stadium. They'll start coming. People will start when things once things start buzzing. It's like any business. You get the best job. People want to come to it. If you don't have the best jobs, they don't want to come. Or they don't have the best environment. Or people aren't happy. Look, is everyone going to be happy? No. But if ninety percent are happy, mate, you're you're going pretty well. Look, and same with us. We've got we've got very long term employees who've been with us for twenty years, and they haven't gone. They don't want to go, and I've got their their kids coming through now because there's an environment. We're a family, and I believe Swindon's a family, and we, we we're going to fight absolutely. But if Swindon are a family and we all move together and we move to the right direction, mate, we'll we'll go up the league and we get the right people and the right budget and we're. Everyone's getting paid on time and everyone's healthy, mate. We're, we're going to be rocking. That stadium's going to be rocking. Uh, this is from James. Um, women's football, uh, as, as you know, is taking off. 
Um, and I think yep. you might have answered this question on the Loath Strangers podcast uh, pre- previously, but just reiterate, yeah. you know, obviously Swindon Town has a, a women's football team and it's great to see more and more young girls getting involved in the game. Would that be part of your investment? Would you yeah. bring them in? Yeah, that, yeah, they, they need to become part of the family. Like the juniors, the under-21s, the women, they all need to be coming back. Women's football is taken off. I know in America it's taken off for big, really big. There's a couple of Australian girls that have gone to a couple of the Premier League clubs. Women football is is big, and it's pretty really big here in Australia as well. I, I believe that the, the Swindon girls need to come back to to the ground, and we need we need to work that out. We look, I don't know the detail on it, but, but um, I always asked, was there a Swindon uh, ladies team? There was, but I didn't know where they played. So yeah, I, now that I know, yeah, we need to get them involved. Look, I don't know what days they play. I don't know how many games they play. I don't know what kind of league it is. I'm not too sure, but yeah, Swindon ladies need to be involved in it, into yeah, they, the into the mix. I think they currently play out Fairford, um, which is a little way from Swindon. But you you would like to see them, I guess, play at the county. Absolutely, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's that's what you want them. Yeah, fair enough. Um, you'll be aware of a rivalry between Swindon and a team down the A420, I guess, that plays in yellow. Uh, I don't know well, how seriously you would I, 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 I can't. I, I can't say it, but uh, I know that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, people, have, people have told me about the yellow team, so I can't yeah. say the word. Then I no, no don't say the word. No, no. Uh, it was from Liam. Sorry, he said, what I, do you think of that rivalry? I think it's good. I think it's good, but we need to beat it. But they're... I think they're still in League One, aren't they? They are, sadly. Yes, yes, they are. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. yeah. I look, I look. I, I don't know the history, so I'm sorry if I don't know the history. But I think it's it's good that the rivalry's there, but we need to beat it. I, I get rivalry; it, it, it's good. It's healthy as long as, <laughs> as, long as yes. no one gets hurt. But. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a very good point and uh, one that I would support wholeheartedly. Uh, from Pete, good young players, and I mean 10 to 12-year-olds, are being snapped up by local teams such as Reading or Bristol City. How can you envisage Swindon Town getting these players to stay with Swindon? goes back to what you were saying before, doesn't it, about making sure you get the right people to go out and look for those players and make sure you don't miss them. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, we need a couple of. I, I know there was one chief scout, Ben Troy, but um, we need a team that goes out there hunt, looking for players. Um, I know Ben's come out to Australia and had a look at players, but we, we need to find players. We need to find that that kid, that gem, out there that that we can we can invest in and bring through the ranks. There might be a good kid in Swindon. Probably a lot of kids, good kids in Swindon that we need to to look at. But yeah, we we need to be out there searching for these kids all the time, and they'll be their full time job and looking for kids. Um, uh, well, one Australian, of course, we had recently was Masamu Luongo, who, who uh, you know played yeah. very well for us. Um, did you see him play? Uh, yeah, I've seen him play. I met him. He's he's a good kid. Yeah, he's a good player. Like he played in Sydney. He played at Fairfield in Sydney and then he went to Tottenham and then from Tottenham he came to Swindon. He's a great player. And we, we've got we've got a lot of good kids here in Australia to that now, but there's a lot to do. We, we need to – there's so much to do. There's, like if we do – if the court case is successful, we'll – there's so much to do that – and we, we need to get a team on the pitch in mid-August. And yeah. There's not much time I'll take from me. What would be your first priority? I guess that would be pretty much at the top of the agenda, wouldn't it? Because, yeah. you know, you know, close seasons are like the blink of an eyelid. They're over within seconds. And then you yeah. need to start playing friendlies and get the team ready for the big kickoff, et cetera. So that has to be your priority, I guess. Priority would get the team and upon a new CEO. Look, I've, I have a, a CEO waiting in the wings, um, but and he would – and get the advisory board as quickly as we can and get our first meeting up and running and work out what our what our issues are what what the um what our financial position is that that would be our key our key role there'd be three major things management 
team, finance. Fair enough. I'm just looking through all the questions that are coming. And as you're aware, there's a great deal of interest in this. Um, this is from Mark. Uh, if you take or when you take over, uh, do you have someone in mind for the manager's post? Well, we've touched on that. You're going to talk to John McGreal and, and uh, yeah. assistant Rennie Gilmartin, of course. Uh, will you get rid of Puma and go back to Adidas as kit supplier? Can we go back to the old student town badge of the uh, past, the spool kit, which is somewhere behind me oh, on that wall? Uh, but so, that, you know, that's another thing, isn't it? Skits, kit sponsorship, all that kind of thing. That needs to be sorted out. Uh, the, yeah, the CEO would be doing that. I, I, do I know Puma, Adidas? No, nah, I'll do that. I, I, don't, I don't know. Sorry. No, fair enough. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Um, many more coming in. Sorry, I'm scrolling through them as they come in, so do bear with me. Uh, do you have any thoughts, this is from Lee, on what you'd do about the training facilities? <laughs> I don't know how much you want to say about the Highworth deal. That's possibly messing you can comment on. I don't know. But what about training facilities? Because it's something that traditionally Swindon have struggled with over the past. Yeah, oh, look, there's. I have nothing to do with the high worth thing, so I can't really comment. I no. believe there's there's something going on with it. I'm not privy to it. I don't really know, and I don't really care. But I, at the end of the day, yeah, we need a training facility, and we need to work out. I, 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 there's so much to do. There's so much to do for us, so we need to work that out. Um, I, I'm not too sure where they train at the moment. Uh, but I'm sure we'll work it out with CEO and the managers and director of football and we'll work out what, what the scenario is and then start moving forward from there. Yeah, fair enough. Um, loads. Gosh, I don't know how long you got. Probably eight hours wouldn't cover this. Uh, the, this is uh, from Mark. The number of people on this call demonstrates to Clem the importance of this proposed takeover to the fans of Swindon Town. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. If Would there be a point when you think, do you know what, this ain't worth it? Or are you completely committed to this 100%? I'm, I'm completely committed to this. I, I, if I didn't think it was worth it, and people have asked me, um, people have asked me about it, they, why do you waste your time and money into it? It's a passion of mine. I'm here for the long haul. So I'm 100% committed. As One point I... Yeah, fair enough. One point I picked up from um, your interview with the Trust, you said you possibly won't be involved in 20 years' time. Who knows where anybody is in 20 years' time? We don't know. No. What, what is your ambition then for 20 years' time? I'm not asking you to say nonsense like we'll be in the Champions League or anything like that because, you know, who knows. But what are your ambitions for the club in 20 years' time? It's hard to... <laughs> Where I'd like it to be in 20 years' time. <clears throat> well, I'd like to be in the Premier League in 10 yeah. years' time. Yeah, fair sure. enough. We, we all but yeah, yeah. is it going to happen? I don't know. Only only God only God knows. But at the end of the day, do I believe it's going to – I don't know. I, look, we, we've got a one, three, five-year plan, business plan, and we will uh, – which we've done, we will keep – addressing that we'll keep reviewing it and we'll keep pushing forward um yeah i like to be in the premier league one day. i'd like to be in the champions league one day <laughs> that, that, that would be a but is it going to be realistic no but you don't know did you think leicester was ever going to win the premier league never no no but obviously something happened that they had the best team and they played and they had a good chairman the chairman was pretty good I believe the champ. They love that chairman. Yeah, the, well, looking at the reaction to his son when they won the cup the other week, uh, will show you just how much that that family is loved. And this is from Steve. I got to see Swindon play in the Premier League. Do you see a scenario in which my son could see the town play there? Well, as we know, it's mega bucks, isn't it? And we saw the effects yeah. of being in the Premier League on Swindon Town for many, many years afterwards. So. It's a double-edged sword in many ways, isn't it? You've got to be, you've got to make sure the club is right before you go for that. Yeah, it's even with the championship. You you need to have decent funds in the in the club to make sure that we, if we do get into the championship, like championship is realistic, but we need we need to make sure that our foundations are right. We've got good money in reserve cash in the bank. That we, when we do go up, we've got a decent budget and we can stay in the championship. 
If there's no point going up there and then next season down. Like I, I saw, like we won the league in league league two. We got into league one. We should we should have stayed there if we we had the we should have been in league one. But we went up and we go back down. Right? We don't want to do that. If we get into, the, we want to make sure that we've got the right foundations for us and the right financial strength to be able to stay in, in the league, not just go up and down. We want to be there and then build, 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 and then go for the next promotion. And, and it's all about foundation. Can't build a house without the proper foundation falls over. Um, this is from Michael. If Brentford can make it to the Premier League, we certainly can. Uh, again, a, a fair point. But, yeah. Um, from Remo, <laughs> I'm ge- I, I guess I know what the answer is. Would you move to England if you take over? I'm guessing the answer would be no, because you probably you got family and stuff, haven't you, in Australia? So I got family, family, friend, Australia. Um, <laughs> no, I would look. I was going over there once a month. All right, and it's a long flight from Australia. It's twenty four hours. So, and I've got businesses in New York. Yeah. So, I was doing around the world every four times a year, and I was going to London once a month. So, my frequent flyer points was pretty high. Um, would I move over to England? No. Would I spend a bit of time there? Yes, I'd spend a bit of time there. Fair enough. Uh, and this following on from Brentford, this has just come in from Pete. Have you or will you study? How Brentford went from being in League One to the Premier League. Um, those of us who were there that night at Griffin Park will remember the defeat on penalties in the playoffs. Uh, their success seems to be built on solid foundations. And that very much goes back to what you're saying. Unless you have, you know, we have seen um, promises built on sand in the past. And we want those promises built on solid foundations. That's what we as fans want. None of the, you know, we're going to win the Champions League in two years time stuff. We want the solid foundations is that what you're going to give us absolutely that we without solid foundation we ain't going anywhere to that now and without the fan engagement we ain't going anywhere we're we're bringing you we want the supporters on the journey with us we want everyone working it together um with the same direction we we but we need the supporters like we need you, you guys need us, and we all move together. Without, it's like my employees. Without my employees, I can't do what I do. But without me, they can't do what they do. So, it's it's the same thing. It's no different to I, I build a business out of a bit out of my bedroom, and then seven eight hundred employees around the world. So, without the right people, you can't do anything. Do I, do we get it right all the time? No, I say that now, but yeah. A good foundation, we've got good stability, we've got good financial strength that make sure that we're in the we're doing what we're doing, these big projects that we do. Uh, this is from Lee. If you come to Swindon, we'll take you to Suju, which apparently is a nightclub, and get you a nice greasy kebab. Would you agree with that? Would, that, would you be okay and up for that? Would you? Yeah, I like I, I kebab. <laughs> <That's another. laughs> I, I've been to the pizza joint after up the right on what's called. There's a fire of Kenya there. I know that much. There's a pizza place near the shopping <laughs> centre. Yeah, I've had a pizza. I've had a. I've had a. Not that I drink, but I went to the pub there on the corner, and I went to the uh, the 50 year anniversary. The con- was it the convention centre, the conference place. It was. Mm. Um, uh, how tough a boss are you? I mean, if do you in your business, how tough are you? Well, I'm fair. Am I tough? I'm tough when I have to be. I'm, I'll give you a cutter when I when I have to, and I'll give you a kick in the back side if I have to. Does it depends on the person? Depends on the personality. Depends on people. Some people you can kick, and you're not you're not going to get anywhere. Some people you cuddle, and you get you you've got to get the best out of most people, and that doesn't mean it's different. You can't run by fear. People want to want to come to work. People, the players who want to come to Swindon want to play for Swindon, not just because they're putting that jersey on because they want to play for Swindon. It's like it's like our business. People want to come to work. If they don't, look, nine times, some don't. But but people want to come to work because they know they get looked after. And when you're getting looked after, people want to come. It's like the support. We look after the supporters and we get the right environment the right food the right drinks and the right 
playing football on the pitch, we we people will come. And yeah, I've had a lot of employees that've been there for a, a long time, and we and they, there's times where I've kicked them, there's times where I hug them, and I praise them and I reward them. It's simple as that. It's no, there's no rocket science to it. It's, I treat people like I like to be treated. Simple as that. You treat me like. You don't treat me good, I don't treat you good. If you treat me good, I treat you good. Simple as that. And if I agree with it, I agree. If I don't agree, I don't agree. It's, Fair enough. Got their own. Yeah, this is from Cy. And this this man values his workforce, not just a number. We need you, Clem, says Cy. Uh, from Kevin, get to the championship and the place would be rocking. Um, now, you, you mentioned fan involvement on the board. Um, now, you're the guy who, who, who signs the checks. So at the end of the day, I'm guessing you or the CEO would have the final say. How much, when you say I might agree with you or I might not agree with you, the bottom line is you do sign the check. So who is ultimately responsible for that decision? It would be CEO and us, CEO and me. But we would advise, if you guys go, we want to go and buy a player that's worth 20 million quid, we're going to go, well, that's not going to happen. No. I'm going to do that for these are the reasons because this is our budget. But if you say to us, look, we want to paint the, I said, oh, I want to paint the seats, I don't know, whatever colour, and you go, no, we're going to paint it red. I go, yeah, fair enough. This is the reason why, because of the history. Like the Rolex watch up on the Stratton Bank, right? And I didn't know how the importance it was. And I said to someone, and they said, oh, no, you can't get rid of it. And I thought, oh, fair enough. Let's get it fixed, get it. And put it back up on the new stand. That that's what I'm trying to say. You, we might say, yeah, we're going to build a build a roof. You might go, oh, why don't you do it? I don't know, half a roof or a, a curved roof instead of a straight roof or whatever. We might want to put the toilets in one corner. You might say, no, the reason why is because we want a better access with the toilets, and there might be a, a, a cafe or restaurant or whatever. And that's what we're going to. That's how we're going to do it. And I thought, yeah, that's not a bad idea. That that's how. It's going to work. Um, we, we, we want to put corporate boxes in the in the Don Rogers stand. Um, you might go, well, why don't you put, instead of 10 boxes, why don't you put 20 boxes? This is the reason, this is how we're going to do it, and these are the sponsors we believe that can come to these to get these corporate boxes. And so uh, there's, we dis- look, I agree and disagree with my managers all the time. My managers will tell me, I don't agree. I'd rather someone stand up to me who's got an opinion than someone just says yes to me all the time. So I'm, I, I, want the best people, I want the best people around me, not yes men or yes women. Um, actually, I, I'm in, I am intrigued by what you're saying about the toilet facilities and things like that because, let's be honest, football fans, you know, we've suffered a lot through those over the years and, that, and actually they are the basis of going to a football match, aren't they? And things like that. If they're comfortable, fans are comfortable. It's as simple as that, really. Absolutely. And, uh, and go on. At the toilet. Having the right facilities, making sure that we've got the right environment and, and the nice entrance coming into the county ground. When you come in, you think, wow. I see when we go, we do these, these buildings, we go, oh, wow, this, this is a nice foyer or... Oh, it's not that good, or you look, you go into the bathrooms and the tiles aren't that great, or the facilities, or the conferences, or the convention. Like it's, it's like I've seen so many buildings around the world, and what kind of designs they can do. So, yeah, great. Okay. Um, now this is from Darren. My commitment to Clem: if he buys the club, I'll buy a season ticket. Now I'm going to ask you about the boycott. You, you'll no doubt be aware that fans are threatening to boycott games, not buy season tickets, things like that. What is your view on that? Look, um, in regards to the boycott, look, it's totally up to them what they want to do. I can't really comment. Do I agree or disagree? Look, I've, obviously I've got an opinion about the boycott. Look, I understand that the fans are frustrated of what's going on, but I don't want to... I don't want the club to be hurt because obviously the, the club is the most important thing. Um, it's not about me. It's not about the lead. It's not about anyone but the club. Um, 
look, I understand that the fans want to boycott, but do I condemn it or approve it? I, I'm not. I can't really make that opinion. It's t it's totally up to the fans at the end of the day. I know that the the supports. I think the supporters trust the. Are pushing for a boycott. I can't. I've got to be on the sideline on this one. I can't really comment on it. Sorry. Okay, fair enough. Uh, from Dave, this has been another great interview. Clem's an absolute breath of fresh air. If he takes over the club, we have real hope of a more positive future. Um, you are getting a lot of backing. I think it's fair to say. And, and I should say at this point, we also asked the club to come on to one of these uh, interviews. We wanted to talk to the club. We wanted to find out what's going on. But they declined. So I wanted to make that point right now. We have asked the football club to come on. Uh, this from Tracy. Would Clem make sure that any development to the ground is fully accessible to disabled supporters? Because it isn't at the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I remember when Anne wanted a, a, a lift to the next level and we were trying to look at that. It's, it's important. That we, we have um, disabled supporters. We need to make sure they were accommodated for them. We, it, it, it's it's important. We need to make sure it's sorted out. I don't know why it's not sorted out already. Um, and Anne was prime candidate for it, and she always wanted to go the next level up. And we, we, I was trying to get a lift, and I spoke to a lift specialist to try to get a lift there so we could get um, get it get it up to that next level. But yeah, it's it hasn't. Yeah, we we, we would look at the disabled areas and stuff like that absolutely um i'm guessing that you are passionate about this and do you <laughs> eat drink and sleep this thing you have other things to worry about i'm guessing um yeah no look do i eat drinks look i've got a lot a lot of things going on trust me i've got i i, I wake up at 4 30 in the morning and i'd probably go to bed at 10 10 30 at night so I've still got a working day. It's seven o'clock in the morning here, so I've still I've got meetings all day today. I've probably got a dinner tonight. I've got dinner, and I'll I'll be flying back to Sydney tomorrow. Do I have a lot of things going on? It, am I a hundred percent committed? Yes, I'm a hundred percent committed. Do I spend a hundred percent of my time to Swindon? No, because I do have a big business that I run. So, uh, but that's why I employ people and. There'd be no difference to, will I run the day-to-day -day running? No. That's what our management will be doing. And the CEO will be doing interviews and whatever he needs to do to make sure that everyone's informed. And and if people are asking me questions and I'll be over there, yep, 100%, I'll be, um, I'll, be I'll, I'll talk to them. And I'll, listen, I've got a lot of fans messaging me now, don't get me wrong, and and... If I respond to it, that will eventually, I'll put that through the, su the supporters or the CEO or whatever, and they can respond to them. But I've known fans there for four or five years that I still talk to. They still speak to me. I haven't got a problem with. Yeah. And Anne Alder, of course, was the former chair of the official yeah. supporters club who I've known for many, many years. And, and she's worked tirelessly for the football club in the past. Um, this from Tony. I know you didn't want to comment on season tickets, but he says if Clem can comment, how safe is the season ticket money if we purchase them? Because you'll be aware there are many of us who are desperate to watch the town play again. We are desperate to go see our team football, play football. You're not in control of that a minute, I guess. But would that money be being invested in the football club as you know at the moment or not? Do you have any idea on that? No. I... I, I I can't comment. I guess. No. I like. Yeah, I couldn't comment. Like, it, it's not. It's not going. It's not going into my pocket. So I don't know. I don't know where it's going. So. Yeah, fair enough. Um, this from Tony. The ground has to be family friendly, which I guess we all share that one. Um, this is from Shane. I think this might be from across the water. Is there any chance that Clem would buy Waterford FC two, please? I know Clem has visited them before. Um, yeah, I've been there before. Yeah. Yeah, uh, from Rob, would Axis become the main shirt sponsor if you took over? No. No, you'd look for somebody else, would you? 
No, I look, I look for other, look, look, there's some great sponsors at, at Swindon and we'd, we'd be going to speak to them and see what they're, look, if, if Axis wants, if we want to sponsor, we'll sponsor it. But if we want to, we, we, um, we'll speak to the sponsors. I think the sponsor, we've, we've lost that engagement with the sponsors and we need to get more sponsorship into the county ground and sponsors in the, um, on the shirt sponsors as well. Like I know Imaging Cruising is on the front. I'm not too sure what their deal is at the moment. Um, and we'll try to get as much sponsors as we can. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up in a minute because I know you've got a very busy day ahead of you. So uh, this from Liam, the supporters trust who talked about building a Don Rogers statue. Would Clem support this? I don't think you'd have any problems with that, would you? Yeah. 100%. 100%. I've spoken to Don. I've already spoken I've got, uh, I spoke to Don uh, three or four weeks ago regarding the been on the advisory board, he was very happy to do it. Um, yes, I'd like to like to build a statue for Don Roger, but there's some other great legends in Swindon that probably need some statues as well. So we need we need to work that out. Um, yeah, Don Roger's a great man, great person. Um, I've been to his house and I've spoke to him. I spoke to him the other three or four weeks ago, and yeah, look, I wouldn't have any issue building a statue, but there's some other greats there that probably need some more statues as well. So we need to we need to look at it as well. Yeah, a lot of clubs are having museums now, aren't they? And uh, yeah. I'm guessing that will be something that you might look at in the future, whereby people can yeah. go and visit that and look at the history of the club and things like that, which would be fantastic. Yeah, and look, look the, that 1969 game was unbelievable. Yeah, the awesome. shirt is behind me. The white shirt is behind me. You'll uh, notice. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it's unbelievable being in Arsenal has been a great, great, it was a great achievement. And no yeah. one thought they could do it. No. So. Yeah, I, well, I was there. I watch it every 15th of March. That's how sad I am. Uh, this from Lewis. What's, <laughs> <laughs> what's Clem's plan to build the academy to eventually bring through younger players? Because, you know, I live not far from Exeter. We've got a fantastic academy. Uh, really wonderful. They bring some great players. We've seen uh, Scotty Twine, of course, play for the town. Uh, we have seen one or two come through. But an academy is vital, isn't it? Absolutely. We, 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 look, the academy is it's vital. If we don't have players coming through, we, then we, we, we need to be having that academy and a strong academy as well. So, yep, yeah, we need to look at that as well. So there's not a problem there. Clem, thank you very much for doing I think we're going to wrap this up because I know you've got, you. you've got a busy, busy day ahead of you and probably need to have some breakfast as well before you start that. Yeah, that's day. true. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Vic. Thank, well, you. thank you very much for being so hopefully honest. I've an, hopefully I've answered it as honestly and um, as clear as I can. I've probably got a few wrong, but I apologise if I have. I just want to... Do you know, I'd rather you got a few wrong than got everything right that you thought people wanted to hear. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what true, about that? true. And uh, we could have been here all night, quite frankly. So uh, We probably could have, but it would have been my day anyway, so it wouldn't matter. I think my first <laughs> meeting is about 9.30 in the morning. So I pushed everything back to I thought, oh, I wonder how long this would go for. <laughs> well, we're getting some very nice comments through saying thank you very much, Clem, and Oh, there's nice. a lovely Clem. There you go, look. So, uh, so they're all behind you. So, thank, thank you, you very much. I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you. No, that's yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. So, no, thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank you very much thank for you. everybody watching. Um, it's getting a bit late now. Um, so, next week, we have got an on the sofa, but it's going to be recorded because, again, we've got somebody from Australia. It's David Squires, who does the cartoons for The um, Guardian. I expect you've seen some of them. Um, there was a nice one about Alan McLaughlin um, not so long ago. So, um, we'll be recording an interview with him. So, thank you very much for watching. Again, thank you very much, Clem. Thank you, Vic, as well. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you.